I gotta try one more time, man, for the haters. Right now is the moment of truth, what I wanted to show you guys and what I was very scared of in the last episode. But on this side, we ran into something extremely scary. Reassemble everything. So as you guys can see over here, here are the parts that are damaged. What is up guys? Welcome back to a brand new episode from Backyard Boys. If you guys have not seen the first episode on this 2019 RS5, I personally recommend you guys to go ahead and watch that one just because you guys will get a better picture of what is going on. We did not have enough time in one episode to show you guys all the damage to the car because we have not even torn anything apart. This is basically how we got the car from the insurance auction. Um, the rear bumper was off the car and we do have the rear bumper laying around, it is wrecked. But right now what we're gonna do is go ahead and assess more of the damage, take apart the front end. We're gonna take off the front bumper. I don't know how deep we're gonna go into the front end to just kind of see all the parts that we need to order. I think we're gonna be repairing this one and like I told you guys earlier um, in the previous episode, towards the end of the episode, I was explaining that this car here is not really the fact of it being um, worth it like money wise it's not the idea is not that it's just for me it's more of like a more of like an accomplishment of a skill set and trying to finish something and see if it's possible or not you know but we definitely will need your guys's financial uh help on this one so if you guys want to go ahead cop yourself some merch down below in the link it's gonna be shopbackyardboys.com and i will greatly appreciate that but we're gonna go ahead and start this episode off first thing we're gonna do is take this front bumper off and then i'm gonna show you guys what i was very disappointed about in the back and that right there just kind of maybe raised the price of everything to like maybe five to seven more grand worth of parts. I didn't really take a close look at how expensive everything is, but it's something to do with the frame rails and the subframe. It's just like <sighs> twisted. Anyways, we'll show you guys a little bit later, but let's go ahead and get some tools together, get this front bumper off and let's go ahead. If you guys like my content, be sure to smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. Don't forget to, um, Comment down below your ideas and whatever you guys think. And a lot of you guys help me very actually. Like the comment section is something that I love because I read every single comment. And yes, oftentimes I don't have enough time to reply to everything or a lot of the comments are similar. They're repetitive comments, but some of the comments, they help a lot. And you guys you know, give me recommendations, suggestions, and it's awesome. Thank you guys so much. Let's get to work.
quite surprised right now. Airbox is literally completely safe. Uh, what I was mentioning in the other video was this thing moved and then you can see it right there. I don't know if you can see how well you can see over there, but right over there, right behind that line, you see that seam seal crack? So we went ahead and took apart the front end, not looking too good. Obviously, you know what? Obviously is giving me the wrong word because we thought we had some front end damage, but not to this extent. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, obviously, we knew we had front end damage, but not to this extent. So, this frame rail looks alright, but I'll tell you guys, that kink over there and that seam seal crack is not supposed to be there. Why? Because this frame rail is actually supposed to be pointed that way a little bit. So, the way the frame rails on this car sit is basically a lot of cars, they sit just directly straight like this. On the Audis, I noticed they sit a little bit like this. So, we can look at the other frame rail and we can look at the front rebar, the crash bar. You guys can see that this frame rail is kind of um, at a, so say, say that's straight right there. It's like that angled, like a little bit too much. It's supposed to be a little bit straighter and that one's supposed to be a little bit. Anyways, it's kind of hard to explain. Like I'm saying right now, here, look at my hands. My hands are gonna be the frame rails, okay? So take a look over here. So here's the right frame rail. It's completely straight and this one is like this. Where in reality, we're supposed to just level them out a little bit. So here you go. <laughs> Here's a good example. Right one is straight, this one's like this. It's supposed to be leveled out, and both of them are supposed to be pointed outwards just a tiny bit. That's the problem we're having. And if you step back, you guys can see by this rebar, the crash bar, and everything, uh, you can see that it's definitely swayed to the driver's side over there. Um, chunk of the bumper is missing on this side, headlights damaged, so obviously we have damage going that way. So, not too sure if the frame rail went up or down, doesn't really look like it. I know it went that way though. Once we get it on the frame machine, what we're gonna do is go ahead and measure if it needs to go down or up, and then pull it this way, either directly up or down. That way we get, you know, reverse, or basically reverse it into how it was prior to the accident. What we're gonna go ahead and do is tear everything apart because everything's broken. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's only a couple minimum pieces that actually survived. The majority of this stuff is broken though. I can see down here we got coolant pipes that are ripped, cracked, and just not looking too good. Either way, we're not gonna be pulling the, or we're not gonna be driving the car up on the frame machine because we have some severe damage in the back, including the axles being torn out. So what we're gonna do is get our skid loader and push it onto the frame rail or frame machine. So it doesn't really matter if this front end's gonna be torn apart or not. I'm very excited to get it onto the frame machine. I'm still about at 99.5% sure we're gonna fix it, but that 0.05 can be there can be a breaking point. If it's something that I'm not confident enough to repair, where it's gonna be OEM spec, or I know the car's gonna be safe, then I'm not gonna do it. So, still feeling all right. This front end is very easy. If this just had front end damage, I would not be scared at all. This is just pretty basic stuff. Pull the frame rails out, reassemble the front end. I had it on my RS3, we had it on a M4. It's pretty basic damage. But yeah, that's what I was saying, that we're not gonna be driving on the frame machine, we're gonna haul it up there, so it does not matter if all these parts are torn apart. And then we're gonna crank it up over there, very high, as high as we can and then I guess drop the subframe or something. <laughs> I don't know, dude, it's gonna be crazy. Literally the back, you're gonna see two frame rails. There's gonna be no wheels, basically nothing, no suspension. You're gonna see two wheel or two frame rails. Nice, sounds like a VQ. Uh, two frame rails and uh, both quarter panels are gonna be off, rear bottom panel's gonna be off, spare uh, wheel well is gonna be off. It's gonna be crazy, I've never done something like this. Uh, let's go ahead and continue tearing apart. This front end, once we got all this torn off, I'll show you guys the rear. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, we are labeling, labeling everything, like as, you know, as clean and as perfect as we can and making it as accurate as we can because with a job like this, you have so much stuff torn apart, it's going to be a big pain in the butt when you're going to assembling it, when you go to assemble it and everything's all over the place. Let's continue working. Y'all laughing at my shoes, but look at this. Come on, buddy. Keep laughing. Keep laughing. <laughs> Keep... I 
I gotta try one more time, man, for the haters. <laughs> yeah, I keep laughing. Sorry about that. So we got this little. We <laughs> do that. Ready? So we got this little outer rider here, and um, come on, I gotta flex a little bit. There you go. Uh, so outer rider, basically rides on cars, and it's a wet erase. As soon as it gets wet, it erases. What I'm using it for right now is marking down all the spots that are damaged, all the parts that are damaged, everything that when I do a second look and order parts, I won't miss. So right now I'm gonna go go ahead and go through go 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 go. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that every part is labeled and just browse from every single angle I could. That way when I come back and start making a parts list, for example, see there's a part number on there. I'm gonna type in that part number, order that part, yada yada yada. This is a nice and annoying, tedious part to this repair progress process, but we're gonna get it done and everything will be fine. So let's start marking. This thing is damaged. This thing is damaged. We got.
as you guys saw over there, we got the front end torn apart and honestly, we're not, not too bad. Basically, the actual structural damage on the car is not bad at all. The frame rail swayed just, I'm gonna say two, three inches, just right about that much or so. Shouldn't be that bad. We're gonna get it swayed back into proper spec and reassemble everything. So as you guys can see over here, here are the parts that are damaged. Uh, here are the parts that we're gonna order new. Basically what survived from here is a couple of fender vents, the headlight we're gonna keep, we're gonna get a headlight headlight tab repair kit. Um, the whole radio support, all that stuff is busted. This AC condenser is safe. And then maybe one more piece. I think this one, but it was a little bit bent, so we might just get a new one. And maybe the fan assembly, but I gotta take a look one more time, make sure that we're not waiting for parts on random things like that. Right now is the moment of truth, what I wanted to show you guys and what I was very scared of in the last episode when I kind of freaked out. I'll show you guys exactly what I saw. So this car here, um, basically we knew that it got a lot of damage like i said earlier we looked at it at the auction and obviously we saw all this stuff we saw it we're like okay this is you know insane amount of work but it's gonna just compliment me as a body tech as a person that loves working on cars when i complete this thing i get to look at it and i'll make that 10 15 20 minute rebuild series and i'll sit and watch that thing 100 times just to feel good but here's what i wanted to tell you guys the rear frame rails they look fine from the outside and that's pretty good but Going on down under this side, on that side we do have suspension damage, a lot of suspension damage, a lot of control arms and stuff like that that are busted. But on this side we ran into something extremely scary. Um, if you take a look inside here, you can see that the, that is the subframe right here. So this here is a subframe. We go ahead and adjust the camera. That right there is a subframe. We got some frame rail, you know, damage over here. Nothing too horrible, but looking on further, right over here you see where my finger is pointing to see if i can get the light on there we're gonna get the focus on there see if i go light from under right there you can see that the frame um or the subframe is completely twisted that's literally twisted dude that bar is just extremely fat and it just butchered it if you look down over here you can see here you see that mounting tab right here to this lower control arm it's just torn look at that thing it's literally torn Ah, oh, that is what's scary for me because now, now, let me explain you guys the labor now. So, yeah, it's, this is not too horrible. We got this gas line thing that's punctured, not punctured, twisted, which we're gonna replace. It's really easy, it connects right here. This stuff is not that hard either. But what I was trying to tell you guys, so now that the subframe is twisted and we gotta replace the subframe, let me explain to you guys um, how much more work we gotta do. So. We're gonna get the car onto the frame machine, and like I explained earlier, we're gonna use our skid loader, which is right over there in that corner. Go ahead and show it. So right there, kind of far, but yeah. We're gonna go ahead and push this thing onto the frame machine. We're gonna probably push it on backwards. Yeah, I think so. We're gonna get it on there backwards. We can pull apart, you know, because the main amount of work is in the rear. We gotta get this car up super high in the air. We gotta have room to drop the subframe. With the subframe comes both the rear wheels, the differential, all that stuff. So you guys can imagine that this car here it's gonna be just a skeleton. It's gonna be two frame rails, basically. And I don't know, it's gonna be kind of scary. I think what I'm gonna do, I think the smartest order of operation for me is to get the car in the air, take the subframe off, pull the frame rails, not be, too, I mean, I don't have to really be careful about anything. You know, the quarter panels are destroyed. Everything under there is basically destroyed. So what I'm gonna do is put the car up in the air extremely high, pull the subframe off, get the new one up there, pull the frame rail exactly how it should be, mount that new subframe on, mount um, all the suspension components on, then cut off the quarter panels, then with the car, with torn or basically cut off quarter panels, we're gonna take the car to alignment. So it's gonna be just a complete skeleton. We're gonna take the car to alignment, do alignment, and then from there we can um, just have a confirmation on the measurements of the quarter panel with the wheel fitment because we don't want to weld the quarter panel on just a little bit right or a little bit left. We want the alignment to be perfect. We want the wheels to be straight. We want the car not to be driving um, what is it called crab walking whatsoever and then we're gonna do that so if you guys are excited for that kind of content please smash that like button and um we're definitely gonna need some financial support on this one so go ahead and scoff yourself some merch down below we're gonna end the episode off right over here um i guess we're gonna start ordering parts we do have a ton of front end parts and a couple more things the rear over here an exhaust system that we need to order and just a bunch of control arms alongside with the subframe it's gonna be crazy but like i said earlier in the video i will be very 
happy and feel extremely accomplished for getting that done. Once again, if you guys enjoyed the content, please smash that subscribe button down below. Thank you guys so much for 250K. That's half or that's a quarter million. That sounds better than 250K. But with all that being said, you guys have a good one. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.